What do you feel when you see this image? For me, I feel the rush of adrenaline when going down the trail, the power of the outdoors, and the na natural beauty of Lake Tahoe. This is an innate feeling that millions of people around the world have when they're living or visiting beautiful mountain communities like ours. I was born and raised in South Lake Tahoe, and my mom gave me my love for the outdoors. And I've spent the last, de last decade of my career dedicating myself through the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency and as former mayor of this city to making our outdoors more sustainable and equitable. But it's not just me. There are millions of people that feel this way and have this love for the outdoors. And that's a great thing. In fact, in 2022, 161 million people participated in some sort of outdoor activity. The year prior, that included 26% new participants to outdoor recreation, those visiting the outdoors for the first time. A lot of people are going outside, and that's a wonderful thing. But this idyllic scenery doesn't paint the full picture. The growing demand for recreation comes with its challenges. Litter, trash, traffic, wildfire, rising housing costs, and impacts to quality of life. Destinations around the world, not just Tahoe, are str struggling to solve these challenges and to create a more sustainable future. The paradox that we must solve together is that the lifeblood of our community is the very thing that is harming it. There are two perspectives at play that I want you to think again about. First, that Tahoe and other outdoor communities have always been and will always be these unlimited, wonderful playgrounds. And second, that everyone has the same experience and access to the outdoors as someone like myself. But before we can rethink those perspectives, we need to take a look at how we got here. Many outdoor communities started out very differently than they are today. Most of them started out with an economy based on resource extraction, whether it be coal, oil, agriculture, or in Tahoe's case, lumber. Tahoe's forests were clear cut in the late 1880s to fuel the silver and gold mines of Virginia City just to our east. It made some people very wealthy and it greatly damaged the environment uh, and we're still dealing with those challenges today. But once those resources were gone, so was that economic engine. And there was a period of lull and our trees grew back and our natural beauty and resources returned to the area. For many communities, this leads to an economic rebirth with outdoor recreation and tourism driving a new period of prosperity. For Tahoe, this was the 1960 Winter Olympics and casinos. This period of time saw grand plans for the Tahoe Basin. People wanted to see a city the size of San Francisco, so 750,000 people living at the lake, complete with a four-lane highway around the basin and a, mouth, a bridge over the mouth of Emerald Bay. So imagine San Francisco at 6,000 feet. Today, we only have about 55,000 residents. By 1990, Lake Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe Gaming Casinos posted an annual gaming revenue of $566 million. But the party wouldn't last, and we were about to go bust like me at the blackjack table. In the 1990s, Native American gaming came to California, and by 2010, Tahoe's annual gaming revenue cratered by over half to just $214 million a year. These impacts are still being felt in our community. Jobs were lost, schools closed, people moved out of neighborhoods and they became quiet. But by choice or not, over the last few decades, outdoor recreation has grown. Visitors, of the, visitors to the area moved from the casino floors to the outdoors. The secret was out. Tahoe is an outdoor mecca, and the numbers show that. Every year, visitors spend about 15 million days enjoying our nature. This is, they spend about $4.5 billion directly in our economy, and with nearby urban areas expected to grow by 27% over the next 20 years, this demand for outdoor recreation isn't going anywhere. While outdoor recreation and tourism is much less destructive than clear-cutting forests, tourism is still a resource extraction-based economy. And when not properly managed, damages the communities and environment that it thrives on. This impact is known as the invisible burden of tourism. 
invisible because it's not as easy to see as a tree coming down. However, if you know where to look for it, you can find it. For example, on the surface, these are encouraging numbers. These are results from a resident survey we did last year. Folks that live in Tahoe love living here. They rated their quality of life on a scale of five at 4.5. Uh, and they understand the importance of tourism and recreation for the economy. The majority of us do. However, there's another side of this story. Only 21% of those same residents agreed that our current system is supporting their quality of life and a strong sense of community. This is the invisible burden that we must turn into a benefit. A benefit for the community and a benefit for our environment. But Tahoe isn't alone. No destination community has figured this out across the globe. Um, but many are making encouraging progress. I may be biased, but I think Tahoe be belongs uh, on the leading list of areas leading this effort. For Tahoe, this year, 18 organizations came together and adopted the first ever destination stewardship plan for the Tahoe region. This plan is reimagining the future of recreation and tourism at Tahoe. A place that is welcoming to all, where people, communities, and na nature benefit from a thriving tourism and outdoor recreation economy. At the core of this plan, and what all successful destinations have done, is prioritizing the community and the environment first. The local economy can only thrive when we are thriving. Now plans are great, but they can't pick up litter and they can't direct traffic. Trust me, we've asked. Concrete actions are what is needed to turn this vision into a reality. First, we need to create an economy that gives back, a regenerative economy. And at the core of that is the people, the community members. People must be able to live, work, and thrive in our community. And that starts with housing. And unfortunately, like most mountain communities, we have a housing crisis. But this crisis isn't because of a lack of supply of housing. In South Lake Tahoe, around half of our homes sit vacant year round because they are owned by folks that just come here on occasional weekends. That's over 7,000 homes in our community not available for local residents to live in. Again, simply put, there is a housing mismatch, not a lack of supply at the core of this crisis. Now, I'm not saying new housing is not important. It is, and there are a lot of people working on that problem and building housing in our community today. But like many mountain towns, the areas that we have that are good for development are very limited. Simply put, we will not be able to build our way out of this crisis. An example of this is Placemates. Placemates is a private company started just north of us in Truckee that's working with local governments in order to incentivize second homeowners to rent their homes to local workers. This has been so successful that while starting in Tahoe, they now serve seven mountain resort communities across four states. And the greatest part about this strategy is the housing already exists. You don't have to go build it. You can turn it on almost immediately. We can go a long way to solving our housing crisis by thinking about what's already there and how to unlock it. Next, we need to improve the Tahoe experience for all. And one of the biggest pain points in our experience is traffic and trash. Tahoe's development took place in the 1960s, and it was the age of the automobile. And our town and community reflects that. Cars dominate. However, this has been changing over the last 20 years. Let's take a look at the first problem, transportation. Meet Lakelink. Lakelink is South Lake Tahoe's newest on-demand microtransit service, and it's free for the rider. In their first year, Lakelink gave over 160,000 rides, 50% of which were for local residents going to recreation sites, running chores, or going to work. This proves that if you make transit fast, fun, and free, people will use it. But again, we're not just trying to be another auto-dominated community. We also want to be a community that's leading in biking. In the last 20 years, partners around the basin have built over 200 miles of bike paths. And we soon will be seeing a bike path called the Tahoe Trail that goes all the way around the basin. Instead of a four-lane highway with a bridge over Emerald Bay, 
we're going to have a two-lane bike path that everyone can get out and enjoy nature. All right, transportation solved. On to litter. Unfortunately, people don't pick up after themselves. And it's not just visitors to the area, it is also locals. When we think of litter, we often think of the beach after July 4th with trash all over it. But anytime you go for a walk with your spouse or your dog in your neighborhood, there's trash there too. And that's coming from us. Um, so we have expanded and worked with Clean Tahoe, who's operated in South Lake Tahoe for nearly 30 years. They now serve all of the Tahoe Basin. So we have a crew of dedicated folks out there picking up after the folks that might not just quite get it yet. We've also installed these wonderful solar compacting trash cans at many of our popular recreation sites. Not only do they hold more trash, but they'll text message the maintenance staff when they're full so they can come and service them. It's these simple infrastructure and people things that we can work on to solve those pain points and make a better experience for everyone. And these also feed into that regenerative economy. Tourism is paying for these programs and it's helping solve those problems, but also provide jobs in the community. But these are all great fixes to surface problems, symptoms. The greater challenge we need to address is creating a culture of taking care, a culture where people are all welcome in Tahoe. Uh, and residents, us living here, it is our job to set that example, lead by example, and have that culture that everyone knows how to behave while they're in Tahoe. And all these are great, and they're moving our region to a positive direction. But most importantly, we can't forget who we are doing this for. As investment in outdoor recreation improves, communities must be aware of falling into an amenity trap. We can accidentally make things too good, uh, and a lot of the core in our community, the core people of our community, get left behind. Let's explore this using myself as an example. Don't let the suit fool you. I know how to get outside. But while preparing for this talk, I did an inventory of our outdoor gear. Between me and my wife, we have five pairs of skis, a couple snowboards, four paddle boards, a kayak. I could go on, but we've got, we've got all the gear you need to have an adventure. Does this sound familiar to some of you? But unfortunately, this isn't the experience that everyone in our community and mountain towns have. This is more of the reality. For example, we all love going to the beach. However, in South Lake Tahoe, there's over 5,000 of our neighbors who live in areas that have limited access to free public beaches. According to tr the Trust for Public Lands, over 100 million people in America, including 28 million children, don't have a park within a 10-minute walk of their home. Additionally, communities of color are 44% less likely to live in that 10-minute walk zone than predominantly white communities. Take Ski Run Boulevard, for example. Located in the heart of South Lake Tahoe, it's probably the greatest street in the country. On one end, we have a world-class ski resort, and on the other, we have Lake Tahoe. However, for residents, there is a hidden story, one of a lack of recreation access. In this neighborhood, there are zero parks within a 10-minute walk, yet it's home to over 4,000 people, including 1,000 children and 156 households who don't have a car. But thanks to the dedicated group of people, including myself, under construction now is Ski Run Community Park. The newest park in South Lake Tahoe will directly address this gap in the community. And because it's for the community, it was designed by the community. We gave students at the Boys and Girls Club here in South Lake Tahoe blank sheets and told them to draw their dream park. And as you can imagine, we, re we received some ambitious ideas, to say the least. Some of my favorites were an aquarium, a zoo, a water park, and as you can see up here, laser tag. But their ideas also showed what type of recreation was lacking. Grass to play on, slides, monkey bars, and a place to gather with friends and family. Despite being located between the lake and the snowy mountains, there is a gap, a need that isn't being met. So we took the ideas received from the kids, the realistic ones anyways, sorry, no laser tag, uh, and we designed a world-class park. 
This park includes what you would expect, but it is so much more. The park is a gateway to the greater outdoors. The park will be home to the first ever manufactured outdoor climbing boulder in the Tahoe Basin. This will allow kids to learn about an outdoor sport, climbing, in a safe, controlled environment where they can experiment and know that they can try new things. And hopefully, it will ignite the spark to a lifelong love and passion for the outdoors. And as you can see, a line is already forming. But we need to do this type of work 100 times over. Small projects in neighborhoods all across the region. So how do we accomplish this? We accomplish this by changing our perspective on those two points I made at the beginning of this talk. For communities, know that your future isn't guaranteed and these outdoor resources are not always going to be here. It takes proactive actions to create a regenerative economy that supports the people and the environment. And for every one of us as individuals, next time you're out on the trail, the beach, or the ski slopes this upcoming winter, look around and notice who's not there. Notice who's missing. We are all visitors to our public lands, and visitors to our public lands should reflect our nation. Do your part. Make the outdoors a more inviting place. Teach someone something new they might not have known. Invite someone to go outdoors with you on your next adventure. But most importantly, go outside, enjoy the outdoors, and together we can recreate how we recreate. Thank you.